Good afternoon, South Africa. Welcome to Afternoon Express, live on SABC3. How are you, Jeannie? Very well, thank you. Lady in red. Literally hit the ground <laughs> running this morning, landed from London, and I'm here to, hey, to be on the couch. We missed you all. You. <laughs> so coming up on the show today, we've got the one and only baby Kale in the lot. She's been acting for the past three decades and recently joined the cast of one of South Africa's best love soapies, Uzalo. We also turn our attention to a very pertinent issue of violence against women and children. We look at a brand new stage production at the Baxter Theatre in Cape Town called Hashtag Just Men and it's a compelling and really honest drama aimed at specifically uh, you know, asking men and putting them through questions, are men doing enough? Wow. So head over to our social media platforms and add your voice to the conversation. We want to know, has your life been affected by abuse at home? Tweet us at Afternoon Chat using the hashtag Afternoon Express or comment on our Facebook page. Now it's also another installment of Mommy Mondays with Joanne Strauss and today we're joined by child psychologist Renee Daniels who shares insight into the psychological effects of growing up in an abusive home. And joining us up front is journalist Sipo Mabaso who recently penned a deeply honest article titled my father is a monster and I refuse to be silent about it. The title needs very little explanation and today he joins us to unpack the full story. Welcome, Welcome to, the to the show. Thank you for inviting me. That is quite a hard-hitting title. Yeah. My father is a monster and I refuse to be silent about it. Tell what happened leading up to the point of you absolutely, I silence, suppose, yeah. needing to break your silence. Mm. Yeah. It's 25 years of essentially psycho-emotional abuse as well as physical abuse. Um, I can't think of a member of our family that he hasn't abused um, violently in some way. Um, as I said in the article, he kicked my aunt in the face, um, you know, for no really good reason. There's, there's people, if he's hit with um, iron rods and things like that. So for me, it was saying, look, there's no price that I'm not willing to pay for my dignity. And if I am to really help our nation heal, help myself yeah. heal first, and then I'll have to start being a human rights activist in my own family yeah. before I can go out there and, and start being a human rights activist for other people. And what was the straw that broke the camel's back? I mean, have you have been having this internal conversation and, and waiting for the perfect time when you were ready to come out and speak about it? Or was there a particular trigger where you just said, this is enough, no further, and it's time? In cases of domestic violence, um, from my experience personally, there's no one particular trigger. There are many triggers and then the family gets in the way and says, but this will besmirch our good name, try and keep our good name in a good place in the good books. So eventually I decided, you know what, uh, I'd rather be ostracized by the family. So there's never for me, there was never for me one specific trigger. There were many triggers. There were many times when I wanted to go public with this. There were many times when I went to the police about it and the police actually victimized you more than the perpetrator himself. Mm -hmm. And so eventually I decided, you know what? This is too much. I need to really, really start speaking up for myself again and again so that other people as well may find the courage to do that. Mm. So it was an act of courage that, that came from deep sure. inside me after many, I mean many years, I mean as far back as I was a young teen, a preteen, I'd be told you'd amount to nothing, you're nothing, blah blah blah, uh, and, and, and the violence would follow if I stood up for myself. Uh, it starts in small little chunks, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a bump on the chest, uh, it's a push, it's a, then it gets worse and worse and worse. And was it consistent? Like, what, I'm curious to know what your relationship with your father was like on a day-to-day -day basis, or was it constant, just putting down and putting down, and with all the other people in your family? Let me make an example. Uh, he'd say, I'm proud of my son when everybody's around. And then he'd whisper into my ear, you're a terrible person. You know, he, he'd do that sort of thing and then smile and then keeping up appearances. Yeah. I remember when I, I didn't pass my matric too well in, in 89 and he was, he was the happiest guy that my friends had, had passed very well and I hadn't. And, and that really scarred me for years. And most people in the, in, in the community believed that he was the best father ever as all perpetrators are very yeah. good at keeping up appearances outside the house and terrorize everybody else. So it wasn't a good relationship. It was a good picture, but it wasn't a good relationship because yeah. I was always being put down. Yeah. And you can only be put down for so long. Mm. Uh, How has your article been met by both your family and the public? Well, the public um, people within you know, the community have said to me, that was a hell of an act of courage 
Um, one lady said to me, you're the bravest man I've ever known. I've got my own stories. I wouldn't dare speak up. Um, and I said to her, you know, that's, that's a personal choice. Uh, I've, I've decided to speak up. And, and some people felt it was just too much. And I said, there's just too much violence. There's too much silence. Um, there can never be too much courage mm. uh, in our society. There can always be too much silence. We need to be courageous. As I say in the article, our truth is enough. It's, it's enough for us to simply tell our truth. Mm. And that is sufficient. You know, I, I'm not trying to change the world. I'm trying to change my world, and I hope that can inspire other people yeah. to change their world. And, and if we attack this thing, and, and I use that as a metaphor, if we attack this thing in the home, then it won't prevail in society. Yeah. If all of us respected human rights in our own homes, we wouldn't have a problem in society. About, yeah. about, about it would become a collective consciousness. Exa yes. Exactly, exactly yeah. my point. So, so for me, it was really to say, you know what? I need to be free of this because I've worked on myself for a long time to try and do the soul inner work yeah. um, to free myself of this. And once I had done that, I was free to then speak, mm. you know, mm. because the perpetrator kind of holds you yeah. in silence, you know, and yeah. pins you down. Um, there's a movie, um, Catherine Zeta Jones, I think it's, it's, it's Rebound, where she says, he somehow steals my voice. He always manages to steal my voice. And my father always managed to steal my voice, my inner voice. And I had decided, no more. Wow. I'm going to have my voice. And, yes. and, and I have my voice now. And we must all have our voices. We all must all us. do the work that it's going to take to find exactly. our voices or remember them. Exactly. Yeah. Remember is, is a key word, yeah. actually. You yeah. need to remember your voice before it was told to shut up. Yeah. You know, before it was told to shut up. Yeah. Um, I think it was Maya Angelou who said, people show you who they are and when they do, you must believe them. The yeah. first time. The first time yeah. they actually do it, you must believe yeah. them. Yeah. And, and, and I chose not to believe because when you're, when you're a young boy, um, your father is your hero until you discover the kind of monster that he is. It takes time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, so it took a long time for me to do that, but I'm glad I have done it eventually. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've so rescued glad. the boy. Yeah. The man has rescued the boy the from boy. all that fear. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. That wow. is amazing. Wow. That's powerful. Thank you We're for sharing be, your story. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. We're going to be on the couch a little bit later on with you in a bigger <laughs> discussion. So we'll be back with more from Sipo later on. And make sure you follow us on Instagram at Afternoon Express because after the show, we'll be streaming live on our page with a continuation of today's conversation. After the break, we look at the Baxter's brand new stage production called Hashtag Just men and that asks the question are men doing enough to combat violence against women and children
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. As we continue our discussion around the issue of violence against women and children, we turn our attention to a powerful new stage production at the Baxter Theatre called Hashtag Just Men. Heinrich Reisenhofer and Sherman Power join us to take on the show today to share the honest and empowering docudrama which calls for men to unite and take a stand against abuse and violence. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the show. Line. Thank you. It sounds so interesting. Tell me all about <laughs> it. Where did you get the idea for the name and how did the story come about? I mean, it came off the, the Me Too movement, obviously. Okay. And, and to put it simply, the women came out, broke the silence, and the, the call was, well, where are the men? Where are the men's stories? Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is the answer. This is the men's stories coming out. Yeah. And so how is the, the, the stage play formatted? Is it, is it men's, men sharing personal stories? All personal stories. Wow. The whole thing, what, the Me Too movement, women told their personal stories on a public platform. Yeah. And this is what we wanted to create, a space where men were going to share their personal stories about stuff that they've done, owning up to stuff, yeah. speaking through shame speaking out and taking a stand and that's what we haven't been hearing is men taking a stand would you guys mind telling us your personal stories and why it's so impertinent for you to be part of this project um for myself i come from both my mother and my wife are, are survivors of rape so it has impacted my life so i really wanted to tell the story but really tell the story from a point of view of men owning up men stepping into the space so i'm sure men comes from a yeah yeah for me it's also my personal story is that i come from a home of, of violence, domestic violence. Mm. So I've, I saw my mother being hurt mm. constantly through my life. And mm. for me, it was just a thing growing up. With, and I'm big, I'm gonna help women. Yeah. When I see something, I step in and I do things about it. And when Heinrich came to me and asked me if I want to be part of this, I was like, yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah, yeah. How did you kind of identify the men that you thought should be in this conversation? I wanted men who would be willing to be honest who would be willing to, because it's, it's difficult for, for uh, public figures to speak about personal things sure. that, like I said, shame base, you know, to speak through shame and actually hold the space and own it. I wanted to find men who would be, it took me four months to get actors who would be willing to do that. Really? So it really takes something. And, and that's the space that we need to encourage if we want to really get men into the conversation is to create the space where men can actually own up yeah. and own up about the stuff that we've done, even the small stuff, you know to own up how we operate as men. And is it the same every night that you go on stage? Because I'm sure, you know, as you start talking about these things, mm. more things come to the surface. Mm. Yes. And then the conversation kind of grows and changes as it evolves. Yes. So how do you work around that or does it? I don't think it evolves. I mean, the stories are the stories, yeah. but, it, but we, d we have an interaction with the audience afterwards, okay. with the men. We just hold the men in the space and we have a conversation about what do we as men need to change, what, it, what do we need to do, and that's where the stories, where we shake up the stories and people are crying. They, they, really? They're speaking about things that they've never spoken yeah. about in their lives wow. before. We create the space where men can start talking about the stuff that they need to talk about because you, you, we've got to realize that perpetrators were once victims who never got to tell their story. And we keep kind of pushing that whole thing into, into the, into the, we speak about the victims, but we need to get that perpetrators were once victims. Yeah. Yeah. The thing yeah. is, sorry, that men don't speak out, yeah. you know? We are learned in society to be you're strong, you don't cry, mm. you don't show emotions and things, and that way, this is saying, no, we need to be human. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you say something so pertinent for me is that you said you, you hold the men in the space, which then makes me realize perhaps there aren't enough safe spaces where men feel like they can come out and anyone watching is looking for an opportunity to recreate this wherever they are. Yes. The key word is safety. Yes. Mm. So that's, that's what we told. We, we created that space with the actors and what we do is we connect them to spaces out there that are already in action. and. Talk about how do we create spaces as men where, as men, we can talk and deal with, also hold each other accountable, listen to each other, mm. speak about our emotions, you know? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much for the work that you're doing. We'll put all yeah. of the details, obviously, on the show, on our cool. website mm -hmm. as well. Now, after the break, we sit down with renowned actress Baby Tele from Uzalo. <laughs> Plus, we have food editor of Taste magazine, Abigail Donnelly, back in the loft, and she's showing us how to make a quick and easy Thai red curry at home. Yummy. Mm. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. We're coming to you live on SABC3 where the stage is yours. And what better way to travel the world than through this cuisine and through this kitchen. Today, Abigail Donnelly takes us on a culinary journey to Thailand with this 10-minute Thai curry, which she promises will be mouth-watering. Oh, and how we wish we were in Thailand this <laughs> And winter. five ingredients. Yeah, Most okay. important, just okay. five ingredients. So it's easy. You can make it 10 if you want, but if you've got your basic pantry staples yeah. from Global, it's easy peasy. Fabulous. Take so, me to so Thailand. Quick, quick. Um, chicken breasts. You yes. can use beef, you can use a bit of lamb steak, you can use prawns, tofu, vegetables, leftovers. But the trick is, if you're going to use chicken, finely slice it. Don't overcook the chicken. Okay. And what I've done here is just toss it in a little bit of sunflower, any vegetable oil, yeah. if you want. A little bit of sesame, although I feel it a bit strong. Gorgeous. And really don't overcook it, because what you're going to do is you're going to throw it back into the poaching liquid just okay. before you serve it. And this is really a family favourite of ours. My husband cooks it all the time, and really, 10 minutes, I'm not joking, and then you've really got... Okay, let's like do a, it. Let's put a, it all together. A, a, a meal from a restaurant. Fabulous. <laughs> okay, so real. A red curry paste. These, okay. This is the trick. Beautiful little sachets of red. Did this come in here? Yes, that okay. came in there. Probably about 50 grams. If you want Ooh, it stronger, you can double nice. up. And it's got all your tamarind, your cardamom, your cumin, your coriander, your chilies, your lemongrass, whatever you fancy. And a little bit of oil, I'll give that a stir. Yeah. And then you've just got to bring that, just kind of melt it in there. Lovely. Because the ideal type um, curry is when the oil little bubbles come to the surface and then okay. you know that it's really authentic. And this okay. is exactly well, there what you it go. Does. Okay, starting cool. to do that then. So then what have we got? We've got you don't have to add this, but I love these. Yeah, oysters. Look how amazing. Extra. Chili, ginger, garlic, tum fresh turmeric. It's Perfect. like the antioxidant. Ooh, let's throw so lots let's of throw that, that in. in. Yes, me too. <laughs> I say a teaspoon, but you know what? Otherwise just pop it back in the freezer until okay. next time. Okay. So it doesn't go off. No waste. That's what it's all about. I like how you throw in the full teaspoons. Yes, just make it all your own. A little yes, bit of chili exactly. and a little and bit of And if you like that. it hot, add some more. <laughs> okay, so you've got that it's fabulous. Then we've got our beautiful chicken. You're going to pop that. No, we're not. We've got no. the coconut milk. Oh, I love, <laughs> I love coconut milk. At the moment, I've been having coconut milk with everything. Oh. I've been having it with my oats in the morning for breakfast. It is delicious. Oh, That's everything. It is delicious yeah. with oats. Okay. So you can use the cream as well. Don't waste. Add a little bit of water to that or a little bit of stock. It depends if you want it a runny or a thick curry. Yeah. I can't quite it like it quite soupy. So I can soup yeah. up the noodles and yeah. toss in the rice. Yeah. Look at that. Can you start smelling that? Amazing. And that turmeric is going to make it like really pungent and yellow. Okay, now the chicken. All the beef, all the vegetables. What I've done here is I've roasted a little... Oh, yes. Don't waste. Don't waste. I've roasted a little <laughs> bit of butter, nuts or pumpkin. You can use baby marrows or baby tomatoes, sugar snap peas, whatever you Lovely. want. And the kids love it as well because it's the coconut is nice and creamy and, and sweet. Okay. This is so easy and it really is such a del delicious meal. It really meal. is. And, I mean, really, literally, it has been probably less than 10 minutes. Yeah. Great. And then what? And then we've got a little bit of garnish. What I've got here is some red, some red rice. Um, yeah. It's really traditional Thai red black mm -hmm. rice, but you could use beautiful noodles, rice noodles, or those beautiful egg long noodles, and then you just garnish it with a little bit of. I mean, you can put it into into it when you're cooking, and beautiful fresh coriander. Oh, coriander is everything. And it's all the aromatically kind of herbs. I mean, look at that, and a little bit of mint. Lovely. If you like mint. And then I've got some spring onions. Gorgeous. Little this red is spring onions. Perfect. And then you could add a little bit of coconut, grated fresh coconut, or even desiccated it. coconut, mm. or chopped chilies, cashew nuts, or salted peanuts. And, yeah. and dinner's and then ready. Dinner's done. <laughs> Thank you so much, Abigail. This is Thank absolutely you. amazing. Thank this you. is exactly what I'm having for dinner tonight. And if you would like to have it too, all you need to do is SMS the keyword EAT to 33650. And of course, all of the ingredients, the shopping list and the recipe will be SMS to you. SMSs cost one round 50 each, no T's and C's apply. And yeah, text us now, EAT. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely about to send that SMS because I want that recipe. I'm having that for dinner. Now, the 2018 Sunday Times Generation Next Youth Survey was released last week, which announces the top performing brands in over 70 categories. In the category of coolest pet food, Pedigree was voted in at number five, while Whiskers 2, the number one spot for 2018. Congratulations to our friends from Pedigree and Whiskers. I might be biased in saying this, but I wonder if Donut and Baxter had anything to do with it. They're cute, they're cuddly, and they're TV stars. Baxter and Donut, the adorably fluffy four-legged members of the Afternoon Express family, are sharing their daily adventures on social media. To see what Baxter and Donut get up to behind the scenes, follow the adventures of Baxter and the adventures of Donut on Instagram. 
Our next guest is a woman who started her acting career on stage at the age of 15, touring with the iconic theatre production, Sarafina. <laughs> 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 Baby Kale has been in the industry for three decades, with appearances in most of our best-loved TV shows like Home Affairs, Isidingo, Intersections, and My Perfect Family. But recently, she landed one of her biggest roles yet as Gabi Sile in SABC's hmm. Uzalo. Hi, Gwenda John. Inle na an. Inle. Bus ticket. Yes, what did? Into mele kaya ba. Who? Who moves on Jamila? Oh, phone John Wala. Nia phone na kila la ba an. Mam su tinekti na uti we na uzmi selo kila la panti. Ngesikhathi <laughs> Oh, baby. Oh, baby. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I feel like this is a reunion. We oh, happen yeah. to work together for many years on I'm backstage. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice to see you. You too. Now, what a way for your career to start. Sarafina. Oh, for what? I mean, so do you remember your, your audition? Because you were 15 years old and then you had to go overseas soon you after. You know what? I never auditioned. Oh, I've told this story I don't know how many times. I never auditioned. Uh, I was sent to the shops. Yeah. to buy 12,5 millimeter, you know, <laughs> in Yala. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in Yala. I was sent to the shops, it was very hot that day. And all of a sudden, this car stops. It was an XR6, it was in Bongeni Gema. Yeah. He had just bought a house, not far from my house, just down the road. So he's like, so what's your name? So I, I tell him, I'm like, okay, who is this guy? Uh, and I tell him, but no, I'm baby, and where do you stay? So my house is just three houses away. So he's like, can you sing, can you dance? I'm like, oh my God, what, what is this, What's is this a joke? Yeah. You know, cause I've known that I wanted to sing all my life. I never thought about acting, but singing, yes. So I knew that I wanted to be in the show business. So I'm like, okay, this stranger is asking me if I know how to sing. And I'm like, yes, I do. And he's like, listen, I don't have enough, enough much time, but uh, I'm gonna come to your house at about seven with my wife. Do you still have parents? And I was like, yeah, both my parents are still alive then. So, and See. luckily, they came same day when I told my sisters and my mom, you know, they laughed at me. They were like, what? Because at that time, everyone knew Mbongeni. Everyone knew Yeah, Stimila yeah. Sasezola, that, that, that song was a hit. So they're like, no, man, no, no. I don't think you're joking. He's not coming. And he came with his first wife, Odisa. They came, we sat there. My father was there, my mom, they spoke. I was just there. And I remember we played um, Brenda Fass's song, uh, uh, life is going on. Uh, we used 45, you know, there were still yeah. LPs and 45s. Yeah. So we played a 45. And you sang it. And I sang it. Oh my goodness. I was not even sure if it was going to happen or not, but I just believed that it was yeah. going to happen. And after that, he just disappeared for another year without uh, any okay. word from him. <laughs> after yeah. he had asked for me to look out for other kids who had talent who could sing at school. And when I got to school, I told my friends, guys, listen, I know you can sing. There's this guy. And they laughed at me again. Like, come on, guys, that's not going to happen. Going where? In New York. No, a black person in New York in the 80s. That is not yeah, possible. Yeah, it sounded like so, a yeah, fantasy. It did. But after a year, he came back and he was like, guys, I'm sorry, but I had to work with Hugh Masigela. He's doing our music, he's composing music. Then we had to start there and then to just Rehearse. rehearse songs, songs, mm -hmm. songs. Then we moved to Johannesburg. And uh, when we left for, we performed at the Market Theatre, but when we left for New York, we are going to perform uh, at the Lincoln, Lincoln Centre Theatre for three months. Then wow. on our second month, uh, he called a meeting to say, guys, listen, I know you want to go back home, but uh, they want your show on Broadway. Oh, my oh. word. And by That's then, it was already sold out, like for one year. Whoa. The first year was just <laughs> sold out. You could have seen us crying, but we were young. Can you imagine? We cried, no, I want to go home, I want to go home. But yeah, we had to do it. Yeah. And I'm glad we did. 
That's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. What what a beginning of a career. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness, that is yeah. And you've had an incredible prolific career on our screens. I mean, yeah. we, we grew up watching you. Film, television, theater. And theater, does it still tug at your heart? It does. Eh, Bonnie, and I always say, if I could just do like two productions a year, I'd be the happiest person on earth. Just, or, or one then, just one. But hey, it, it never... I did try, but oh, it's hard work. Because we have to shoot like uh, from six in the morning up till 12 then you have to rush to the theater for for rehearsals so yeah it, it's too much it's time consuming yeah it is yeah. it yeah. is but hey i still love theater exactly. i would do it any time of the day yeah. Exactly. Well, you're on SABC One, Zuzalo, the most watched show oh, in the land. That one. You know, I always <laughs> say that when the universe says yes, nothing is impossible. Wow. You know, nothing is impossible. Because when they first started, they called me to say, Dumandlovo uh, and um, what's her name again? Gugu Zuma. They called to say, uh, is this baby, we want you. There's a show that we're doing. Uh, hopefully, it's going to be a soapy but I want to give you a one-year contract. And at that time, I was working with, uh, I was doing Zabalaza. It was my third year in Zabalaza. And I knew the Zabalaza was coming to an end, so I could not just drop them just like that. I was like, no, I can't bend bridges. It's fine, guys, yeah. uh, I would love to, but unfortunately, you know, I'm busy with this. And I've never worked in Devon my entire career, I've never, not even a show, nothing, yeah. you know. So I wanted to go, but I was like, no, not now, I can't. It's not the right time. So after like three years, I get a call again last year, October. Hey, it's us again. again. Remember us? <laughs> we still want you. Oh, that's you know? so lucky. You know, I was like, oh, well, why not? The universe Amazing. has spoken, so. Wow. Yeah. You shall follow. Well, yeah. we, can, we want to find yeah. out more about that. You're a perfect a example while. of when it's yours, it's yours. Yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> now, we've got more to come from Baby Kale after the break. We chat family, motherhood, and a secret wedding that took place last Ooh. year. Ooh. Exactly. <laughs> and it's time for another edition of Mummy Mondays. Today, we look at the long-term psychological effects of growing up in an abusive household.
ska nu se. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. We're still on the couch with legend Baby Gurley. Mm. So you're also a mom and a wife. Yes. I know your firstborn little girl from when she was this high. Your pony. So, <laughs> and she used to have little cute pom-poms. Yes, I know. <laughs> and when I moved here, she was like four months. Yeah, she wow. was four months then. Yeah. yeah. Now she's a big, beautiful girl. 19. <laughs> she's 19. She's and, and is she following in your footsteps to become an actress? Yes, she. Yeah, yeah, she's doing it the so right now, um, as in Bumi, but uh, she's more into into fashion. Uh -huh. Yeah, she's more into fashion. She likes acting, but she always says, uh, "I like it, but hey, mom, this is what I want." Right. Yeah. Wow! Wow! And, and do, you, do you find it makes it easier for her to have a mom who's already in the industry? Because you kind of can warn her about what to look out for, advise her, I, I guide do, her. Hey. I do, I, I do, I do guide her. I do because I mean, at 19, even boys, they all know that they, and I'll always tell her that, you know what, babes? <laughs> Sometimes you find that it's not about you. You know, mm -hmm. they want to do something because you are my baby. Yeah. So you need to be very careful mm -hmm. about those things. There's a thin line oh, there. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But that's amazing that you're so open to communicating mm. that with her and mm. being so honest. But I think that comes with so much, and because you've been through so much oh, as yeah. well. I remember discussing something with Boiti actually recently mm. where she got a, an ancestral calling to be a healer. And yeah. apparently you had it as well recently. Oh, yes, I did. Uh, that was, let me count, that was 2004. Yeah, 2004. What does it feel like? What is it like? Because I don't understand it. So I it, want to it, know it's what strangely, emotions are. It, it, it's, it, it's very strange. You know, I can never really explain it. But with me, I'd, I'd known about it since I was 10. Yeah. Because I remember, but my father was so against it. And like every time when I wake up, my mom would be like, oh, slept well? What did you dream about? Look, and eventually she started asking, but mom, why do you always? And it's like, no, because your dreams, they are always spot on. They are always wow. on. But I never understood wow. it then, you know? Mm. So from the age of 10, we tried to, to just calm things down. We tried, okay, I thought, okay, now it has gone away. But my mother passed on, my dad passed on. And then eventually, again, just like, no, you have to, because actually my mom was meant to become one, not me. Yeah. But because she had passed on, so I had to take over. And do you trust your instincts? So do you trust Very, your gut oh, and your dreams when you I, are connected to it like that? I do. Wow. I do. I do. It's a, it's a beautiful feeling. It's just that sometimes it's so scary in a way that you would foresee things, and, but you can't share them with that person. You oh. know, like if something bad, well, you'd foresee those things and be like, would keep to yourself. So what I've always do is um, I'll, I'll just I'll drift away if possible. But do, do oh, things happen? No. Like if you had to dream about somebody and then yeah. if you had to dream that something either very yeah. bad or very good was going to happen and you weren't allowed to tell them about it, has it happened? I where... remember with my, with my dad, with my dad when, um, oh God, I woke up, I dreamed that he had died. And apparently I was crying in my sleep. So my mom wakes me up to say, hey, wake up, what is it, you're crying? I'm like, no, my dad. I thought, same day he passed on. <gasps> no. And yet she had said to me, no, 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 it means, no, he's going to live longer. You know, it means going to oh, live longer. Whoa. But same, same day. Wow. It did. So it's just, So that yeah. is scary, I suppose. It is, yeah. It's wow. a big responsibility. It, it is, because sometimes it can even hold you back uh, from, from, from being loved, from having a man, from having, because you, you, like, you, you sense so many things and be like, you know what, if, you, if you're with me, you need to be with me, because, you know, I'm not alone, you know. Yeah. It's, you know and ah. it's so hard to get that. It's hard to but explain to now. This I is your second happy. marriage. And you got married but secretly. Ah, I did. Oh. I pulled it off, eh? Oh, you did, you pulled it off, well done. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. And that's one of the reasons like I thought, you know what? When I signed the um, Uzalo contract, oh, that's my husband. Oh. When I, hey, babe. You when can't I so fly. <laughs> Uzalo, thank you. Uzalo contract. I just thought, oh my God, what is this? What is this saying to me? I just got married three months ago, and now I have to move to Durban and leave my family here. You know, it's. Uh, but I signed the contract without telling him. I told him only after three days. And is he supportive? If it was like, you know, you know how they are. Yeah. Like, you shouldn't have done that. You should have told me first, you know, like, but eventually, you know, after like a day, 
he was cool with it. He's been supportive, but it, it's not easy because he stays alone. Yulisa stays alone. How he long are you in Durban for and how, how long are your breaks? So do you, is it like going forever. to work to boarding school? What if he's school? watching? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Can't you convince him to, to, to move, move up to Durban? Yeah, beggar, stay in Durban. Stay in Durban, yeah, I know, I'm trying, but mm, mm, no, he doesn't want. Okay. Yeah, yeah he doesn't want. But you know what? I th it's working. To be honest with you guys, it yeah. is working. Because he's there, I'm in Durban, so when we meet, it's always it's fire. fire. Sparks. You know? yeah. <laughs> Listen, I, I love think it. that is a secret to a good <laughs> relationship, is having yeah. a little bit of distance. Yeah. And I've been I so lucky. Yeah. Yeah. With my relationships, yeah. it's always been like that. So yeah. it works. Yeah. yeah. Well, it works with your calling as well. There's it, so much that just yeah. works. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you so exactly. much for joining us. So that's today. it. You're amazing. You yeah. are such a legend. We love having you here. Thank you, guys. <laughs> I'm coming back in a year. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and congratulations on all of your work in Uzalo. We thank can't so wait much. to watch more. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Pride brings a touch of pride and the natural beauty of olive oil to your table. Made with love by Clover. Olive Pride's blend contains a delicate mix of seed oils and extra virgin olive oil that delivers a wonderful almond aroma and flavour. Now today it is the quintessential ingredient in a local is lacquer dish. Mahodu bread pies. Oh, wait, and it's Did Mahodu I Monday. Did I just It's Mah <laughs> Well done, you. Well done. So this yes. is a very, very interesting recipe, and you simply have to try it at home. All you need to do is SMS the keyword CLOVER to 33650 to get this recipe sent directly to you. Clem? Yeah. It's now Mahodu... Mahodu. How do you pronounce it? Mahodu. Mahodu. There we go. Mahodu. It's you got Mahodu it. Mondays now Mahodu on Monday. Express. I want to do Mahodu Monday every Monday, <laughs> and I want you to say it, OK? I'm going to do Mokhodu Mondays on Afternoon Express. <laughs> the stage is yours. All right. How so, do I make my Mokhodu? First of all, we're using some olive pride in the yeah. pot. I'm not going to miss. Nice. The oil's very important because we don't I add... thought I'm your olive skin pride. You can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, olive pride is really great. It's a mix of seed yeah. oils and olive oils, which means we can deep fry, saute using dressings, kind of like the all-purpose oil. Okay. So, it's very important. Like I said earlier, you need enough oil in your pot. If you don't have enough, your veggies are going to blister. Okay. And when that happens, they go bitter. You don't want that to happen. No. Nobody no, likes never. a bitter veggie. All right, cool. Okay, so nice and golden in brown. In, we're going to go with some peppers. yellow, green, and red peppers. And each one of them has their own little unique flavour. Okay. That's going to come through quite a bit in this dish. But they're actually all... I'll never forget that little trick that you told me, that all peppers actually are the same. It's just whatever colour they are, it's just their different ages. The different stages, exactly. Incredible. And then... I'm, I'm gonna actually going to keep a pepper for long enough and see it age. And see, will it change colours? No. no. I think it's going to go brown and then black. And then flush. That's going to happen next. OK. So, <laughs> I've added some garlic quite a bit. And it's not the roasted one. It's the fresh one because it's going to go for about two hours. So, I want that nice pungent garlic flavour in there. This is okay. for you. Our morocco leaves. What am I doing? Slicing it. Any way you want to go. Go crazy. But again, always remember, if you're cooking for four people, right? Yeah. I'm gonna say about 500 grams of leaves. Oh no, of course. It's it gonna sh disappear. It shrinks down to nothing when to you cook absolutely it. Yes. nothing. Okay. So it's smelling nice and fragrant. Yeah. I'm ready for your leaves. And I'm already getting nervous because I see the mojito next to me. Uh, oh, man, mm. it's, I love it. I love it. Okay, I need this. But okay, it's my favorite, actually. Swap, swap sides. Go into the pot. Swap back again. Go. I got some curry spice. Yeah. And this is like a mild curry, but you can go crazy. Yeah. Go with nice, some nice heat if you want, if you can handle okay. it. Yeah, I can handle the heat. You can handle it. Then I've got some tomato paste in the tube, in the tube. Yeah, there you go. I kind of like these little, little ones. We can reseal them again. Exactly. But I love tomato paste. It definitely gives you that flair. You know that... Ah, exactly. Yeah, and it's good to have flavor. it in your diet. Exactly. Because it's lycopene. Okay. Which means you don't burn as easily in the sun. I told you that originally. <laughs> what? <laughs> Well, I was always saying, because I eat so many tomatoes, it's why I never go to get sunburned. OK. All right. Now I can get, get your tomato, your chopped tomatoes. OK. And that's going in. Okay. So it's kind of like a, a stew, essentially. Yeah. We just added a bit of very, curry very in nice. for flavour. A okay. bit of water. And then I'm going to add the tripe. So what I've done with the tripe is I've kind of soaked in a little bit of onions, a little bit of salt and pepper. Okay, I'm, wanna, I'm just so curious. And my hands are clean, obviously. They're always Go clean, for it. But that's... You're so brave. I like that. No, because I have to suss it out. If I'm going to eat it, I've got to know what's... All right, okay, cool. You hang okay. on to that one. Can I take the bowl? Yeah. Go. Cool. Okay. It's really Where delicious. Where is this from? Excuse me? 
Okay, doesn't matter. Well, that, that's a lamb. That's a, the lamb's stomach lining. Okay, do, really? do you want this now that I've... Yeah, okay. please do. Can I throw it back in? Back in. I washed my hands before okay. I got into this kitchen. So the way, <laughs> what I did was... I used, Jokes, I, did. <laughs> I used my olive bright to make a dough. I've hollowed them out, cooked them in the cans, and I stuffed it. So it's kind of like a mohodu, like, buddy chow. Okay, I love this. I absolutely love this. So how did you... There you go, you hollowed it out. Yeah. So, we're gonna, then so you can it. start filling that up during the ad break. <laughs> I think they look amazing. I know, I think they look phenomenal. This is such good work. Where's, Where's your spoon? spoon? I lost your spoon. Okay. <laughs> there you go. How fun. This is absolutely great. And now we've got a little Mokhodu bunny chow. Yay. Bonnie is going to love this. Local is always lacquer, and we'd like to see how you're getting involved with Mokhodu Mondays by commenting on our Facebook page by posting pics of your dish. Go to Facebook, or uh, yeah, our Facebook page is Afternoon Express, or tag us on Instagram at Afternoon Express using the official hashtag Olive Pride and hashtag Mokhodu Mondays while you're at it. Remember to SMS the keyword Clover to 33650 if you would like to give this a go. And if you missed it, here is a quick recap of all the steps. Made with love by Clover. It's that time again. It's another edition of Mommy Mondays. And we'll keep it keeping it on theme with the discussion of the day. Apart from the physical harm domestic violence can inflict on a child, it also leaves psychological scars that can last a lifetime. Absolutely. Now, even when children are not the victims directly, being a helpless bystander to abuse mm. has deep negative psychological consequences. Now, to shed light on this issue is child psychologist Renee Daniels. Thank you very, very much for joining us in studio and coming to discuss this, this issue. I, I want to unpack, I mean, 95% of domestic abuse is the female or the, the wife being abused by the partner. How does this actually impact the children who are witnessing this abuse? Um, thank you for inviting me to the show. Um, what happens is that um, your, the home is supposed to be a safe environment mm -hmm. and parents provide this for children. Mm -hmm. So the moment they're, they're trusting parent is now the abuser or the offender causing harm and disharmony and dysfunction, the child learns to distrust mm. any environment, even if it's a safe environment. Oh, whoa. And I mean, I think, I've, I've always said this, that when the, I've, and I heard it from somebody else, that when the elephants fight, it's the grass that gets trampled on. That's, that's, that's correct. Um, yeah. And, and w what is it that goes through the child's mind mm. when it's happening? I mean, what are the, obviously children are different. Mm. Are there different reactions according to each child's temperament mm. or personality? Or is it just a standard type of response? Each child responds differently. And it really depends on their temperament and resilience. The resilience factor is actually the key because we all can be exposed to the same um, dysfunctional behavior, but we're going to react differently. So really much dependent on the child. And what happens usually is they either present with anxiety or they will become isolated mm. or they will become bullies themselves. Mm. 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 And also in terms of the children, what's the best way to deal with it? If, for example, we notice mm. that somebody's being abused as a child, what, what is the best way to, to help a child through this abusive situation? Well, it firstly depends if the child will be able to trust you. Mm. 
That is the mm. main thing. You need to gain the child's trust at first. Mm -hmm. Once you have that, um, you can explore options with the child going to a social services agency, speaking to a psychologist, mm -hmm. or reporting it at any of the institutions or at the mm -hmm. SAP. Um, PS. Yeah. Um, however, the child doesn't trust anybody mm. and that is the key. And if the parent, the father or the mother is the abuser, um, the child will not want to report because the provider will be taken from the family. Right. It's that Stockholm Syndrome, you That's love your kidnapper is. almost yes. or, your, or your, your, your perpetrator. Um, and are there situations where the child wants to protect both parents so they don't speak at all about what happens in the home environment mm. because for them it's it's a way of protecting both their parents or s keeping the family the together. together yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. That happens, but the child have that love-hate relationship mm. with the parent. Because the parent, the abused parent, can be loving at times. It's not always a monster. Yeah, like like Sipo yes. was saying yes. earlier, it's it's they're good at covering it yeah. up. Yes. Yeah. But yes. but what are the effects? I mean, the, it's essential that one deals with it as soon as possible in terms of child abuse. What, what would you say are the effects of children not dealing with their, their abuser and, and their situations from an early age and how does it present itself then later on in adulthood? Well, for children, for example, school going children, they will have emotional difficulties, difficulty mm -hmm. regulating their, their emotions, whether it's sad or happy, it will always be exaggerated mm -hmm. uh, feelings that they are exposing to. Mm -hmm. They will also have learning and memory difficulties mm -hmm. at school. Um, and they will find it difficult to make friends because mm. fighting is the norm, shouting is the mm. norm. So it's difficult for them to make appropriate friends. And yeah. perhaps also they're trying to show control in some part of their That's lives because they yeah. can't show control at home, they can't control that situation, so they try to act out at school. Yes. If, yeah, and if there's a parent watching, any number of parents watching who are going through this and who can't necessarily leave mm. the home situation and protect their children yet or don't have a long-term solution to their problem, what can they say to their children in the meantime that can let their children know that they see what they, their child is going mm. through and that they're not alone and that I'm here with you and it's, it's okay, one day things are going to be okay we or they're going to change, it, yeah. yeah. Well... If you say that too often to a child and the situation mm -hmm. doesn't change, the child will then not believe you anymore. Mm -hmm. uh. So again, you are not protecting me, mommy, or mm -hmm. you're not protecting me, daddy. So again, the child will, will not believe you. Again, the trust, yeah. Mm -hmm. The trust issue comes in, and you must remember, um, we as parents are the first attachment relationship that is formed with the child. So if the child can't trust us, and you say it a gazillion times, it's not going to happen. Mm. The child is not going to trust you. The child's not going to believe you. The child's going to become angry or is going to become mm. introverted and or feel isolate that you allowed them to stay in that mm. situation That's when you could have done something That's about So it. the blame and the shame is going to come because mm. he wants to act out. She or she will act mm. out in some other way. And in adulthood, it would present either as having difficulty uh, committing in relationships, mm. difficulty in trusting partners. And the scary fact is that they will be attracted to the same kind of person. Oh, yeah. Because the image they have of a parent mm. is that of a volatile, abrasive person. And they are attracted to that immediately. Oh, mm. wow. Okay. And that's the sure. scary part. Mm. Yeah, Very it's scary. a never-ending cycle. That's correct. So there's still so much to unpack about this topic and we'll be back with more from our guests after the break. Make sure that you follow us on Instagram at Afternoon Express because after the show we'll be continuing the conversation online which you can stream directly on our Instagram page and get involved in the conversation further. Olive Pride brings a touch of pride and the natural beauty of olive oil to your table. Made with love by Clover.
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, today's topic of discussion is around violence against women and children. Earlier, we heard honest accounts from journalist Sipo Mabaso of his upbringing with an abusive father. Plus, we chatted to child psychologist Renee Daniels about the long-term effects of growing up in an abusive household, as well as baby Ngele. Now, the conversation doesn't stop here. Now, make sure you follow us on Instagram at Afternoon Chat. Afternoon Express, rather, because after the show, we'll be continuing the discussion live on our Instagram page, giving you an opportunity to ask questions and share your stories with us. Exactly. So, on the, on the topic, I suppose, of abuse of women and of children, something that you mentioned earlier on in your interview was that when you do go to the police, often it's not the, the desired effect of what you want from it. I mean, tell me about your experience with that and, and what can change. All right. Firstly, is that the police um, do not have a separate room where you go and talk about your domestic violence. So it's not issue. private when you're so reporting it's not on an issue. It's out there, yeah. at, over the counter, and they speak amongst themselves loudly. Oh, what's the matter? Oh, your husband beat you, or your father beat you, or whatever the case is. Uh, so everybody knows that that, that yeah, you go into. Yeah, and they have a running mm. commentary about it before exactly, they attend to it. Exactly, yeah. and, and and I've seen one or two women simply walk out. Yeah. Um, and, and they just couldn't take this. Secondly is that there is no human rights training among the police. Um, in other words, the academies where they go for training need to have a serious human rights element yeah. about it. Maybe the constitutional court or allied organizations sure. need to get involved and train police about human rights. Exactly. Um, thirdly is that I found in my experience, police laugh at you when you talk about the constitution. Yeah. I found that despicable. So there's no sensitization <clears throat> in terms of the Constitution. Police think the Constitution relates to big organs of state sure. and not to human relations person yeah. to person. Fourthly, yeah, I'm so, going to have to yeah. stop you there because unfortunately we don't have any, any time left. However, we are continuing the conversation online. So if you do go and tweet us at Afternoon Chat, we'll be right there. Thank you so much to all of our amazing guests for being here Thank today. You, yeah. it's, it's a amazing. big conversation. It's an honor to have you with us. Thank you so much for coming. We'll be back again tomorrow, same time, same place. Good night Good and night. happy eating. Made with love by Clover. Another feel good production.